Rwanda. I guess that's just an inevitable next step as the new legislation is signed into law. Yeah, well, I think the part that isn't inevitable and the part that demonstrates that this is really about a theatre and a spectacle of cruelty is that it's been announced that it's, it might be happening this week or potentially leaked that it may be happening this week. And that's clearly just about coinciding with the local elections that are taking place on Thursday. I think it's a really damning reflection of our leading political party that they think that rounding up some of the most vulnerable people in our society, bundling them by force into vans and taking them away to lock them up with the threat of deporting them to a dictatorship for life we, hanging over them. We have absolutely no idea that, that that is what what is going to happen. And actually, to be fair, we don't have any details on how this plan is going to be operated. But that is how detentions and office. deportations do work. That is literally how they work day in, day out in this country. We've been um, undertaking them for decades, just not to Rwanda. So what happens is that these people who are in the asylum seek system are required to check in regularly with the Home Office. At any point when they do that, they can simply be taken away and bundled into a van, as I say. They are taken away by force. They then um, are locked up in prison-like conditions in what's called detention, and then they are held there um, in a cell waiting to be forced again by force. And it does take violent force to put people on a plane um, when we, they don't wish to. We don't know that any of that will happen. And in the absence of specific details from the Home Office, it's, it's difficult for us to, to form judgments at this stage. But I appreciate that you are talking from, from past experience. But the government has been through a democratic process to bring about this legislation. So it is entirely within their rights then to enact it and to see it through, isn't it? Well, I would push back again. That That is literally what's going to happen. The government would say that's what's going to happen. That is how this is done. It is a violent process. But in terms of the democ democracy of the question, I mean, we're looking at a government that's literally doing this because we know the polls are so dire and they don't have anything to show us um, that would actually benefit our society to try to convince us to vote for them on Thursday, such as, you know, having tackled NHS waiting lists or dealt with the fact that rents are soaring and people still can't afford their groceries. So they're picking on the most vulnerable in society in order to try to win back some votes, when quite obviously this isn't what the public want, and that is shown in poll after poll after poll, which demonstrates that we want to vote them out. And so this obviously doesn't have the democratic accountability that they claim it does. Well, well, that is clearly your view. The polls are quite ambiguous depending on what question you ask them around this. Around but they're not this. ambiguous about who's going to win the next election or who's going to lose, more to the point. Well, nothing is decided until the voters go to the polls. Um, can I just ask what you make of the fact that the Republic of Ireland is reporting increased numbers of migrants coming over the border from Northern Ireland? Now, the Prime Minister says that this is evidence that the Rwanda deterrent is working. How... Ironic, really. I mean, when when the French introduce um, hostile policies that leave many asylum seekers destitute um, on their streets um, and, and then those people continue their journeys across the channel um, in very dangerous circumstances to try to find safety in the UK, we, well, our entire national conversation and our policy agenda is driven by that issue. Um, and, and it is presented as the biggest outrage that has ever occurred. When again, I would I would suggest that there are other outrages such as the NHS waiting list and the number of ch children in homelessness in the country. But that then when we create a, a situation so hostile and so threatening to the, some of those people that some of those extremely vulnerable people think that the, their best shot is to try to move on again, pay smugglers to take them on another um, irregular journey. Then we say that that's the plan working. I mean, this this government has no shame. It is um, a, a really, like, really, truly a dark time for our politics at the current time. And, and we should not be a country that prides itself on being unsafe and unwelcoming to refugees to such an extent that they would pay smugglers to escape us.